Rise on your feet and put your hands together as I bring to the altar a man who decided to be a friend to me, God's own prophet. Venerable Moses Omeki. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Israel, it's not like unto you. Thank you for the opportunity to be alive in such a challenging time and season. Thank you for the season called the end time. Thank you for the epic battles of these last days that is unveiling by the day. And the truth that is in your word. That there must be the declaration of the gospel of the kingdom. And then there is the fig tree generation. And then the abomination that causes desolation. And then men who will rise up as a witness for you in the time and such seasons. And after which their voice has become strong and strengthened by your hand and by your power then the end will come father this is the season and we know so we ask for your power and grace to open the eyes of our understanding and reveal to us what we ought to do in such a time as this for the Bible says that the sons of Issachar were men who had understanding of the times and knew what Israel ought to do. Father King of Glory, we pray in this time and season of battles, challenge, confusions and deceptions. Help us to know what to do. I pray for these young ones. Thank you for the burden you are laying in their hearts. Thank you for the light you are bringing to them. Thank you for the things you are helping them to know in time like this which will advance them in the area and direction of your call towards their lives oh lord i pray open up your heavens this morning and pour down your grace and cause these hearts to burn with unquenchable blaze of your fire let them oh god come to a point of realizing that this earth and all its mysteries and all its its gains and all its glories as it were is all passing away the man who lives and walks by your spirit the bible said it is such man that will abide forever thank you father king of glory for the good things you are doing and again much 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 graciously for your mercy divine mercy and grace which has granted us such unmerited favor and such unmerited unmerited help in times of need sometimes lord i look at my life and i know that it is your goodness and nothing more be glorified and i ask oh god that this morning these ones whom i have come to fellowship with that lord in the process of time the words which you will speak to them through my mouth shall be like a very dew that rests upon a green field and it shall cause all the seed of your grace and all the seed of your word in their life to germinate and begin to sprout and bring forth fruit in the name of jesus blessed be thy name in jesus mighty name we pray amen please sit down i am glad to be in your midst um i want to thank god for uh, all of you um when you meet people especially young people who have the burden in their hearts to seek god and to walk in the way of christ it is a very rare very rare occurrence it is common because we think we are in a part of the world that is very religious if you have the opportunity to start traveling you will know you will know that we are too privileged in this country and we have indeed abused that privilege we are too privileged to have much of religious activity 
and the opportunity is that in the midst of much religious activity you can tap into god you can assess god you can you can touch grace and a whole lot of these religious activities seem not to be bringing forth the influence and the effectiveness that god should have over the land and it goes to only show you that we may not have known or recognized how privileged and blessed we are i've been to countries where you can hardly preach the gospel you can hardly preach the gospel in the open everything that goes on there is on the ground church fellowships house fellowship meetings of brethren in three twos maximum meeting you will find is eight eight persons but you will you will you, you will you would observe such hunger and joy such limitless and boundless joy that is radiating in their hearts for that small silent circle where they sat and worshiped the lord there are places where the 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 prince of this world has overtaken the joy of the kingdom and the joy of being in god's presence such that the cultural invasion that has attacked christ and religion in such setting is so obvious it's palpable you will you could see it the cultural invasion is real that um what what carries the baptism religion or what carries the baptism christianity is still in place but everything you look in everything you see in it has no gap has no garment has no adornment of christianity in them such cultural invasion is becoming stronger even coming from the territories where this these things are evolving it's now penetrating and globalizing it's gradually getting global it's it's penetrating ideas it's penetrating different parts of the world and we are adopting them unconsciously because they make their impact through the back door of images i call it the back door of images because once you cannot sit down and read the bible or read books you will discover clearly that it is easier to pick up something and watch which is like a voice or image or a media than sit down and walk with the bible and keep writing and keep journaling things until the holy spirit pets forth pets forth his image out of your life it's difficult now we are gradually becoming an image driven generation that that has no energy i've lost sufficient energy amount of energy that can allow you sit down and study to show thyself as scripture said what approved who a workman a workman a workman so that's that's temerity that tenacity is really getting lost the reason is because everything is becoming fast we are a generation whose minds are programmed to run fast very very fast and because everything is programmed to run fast a friend of mine a, a medical doctor friend who were classmates in the university he lives in the uk now he's a child of god we we worship god together all through campus and he he is doing a major work he's a he's a, he's a pediatric uh, consultant and he works among the children most especially the mentally retarded or the mentally deranged so his his field exposes him to the children youth that are assumed to be mentally deranged i'm making all of this introduction this is not my teaching i want to get you to a point where you will realize the seriousness of every opportunity that god gives you to come into his presence are you hearing what i'm saying yeah, you, you must realize the seriousness of it and even beyond the seriousness of it you must realize the seriousness of being alive one day being alive just one day what you must invest and a sure to harvest within that day within that day and the investment and harvest i'm not talking about the, the the economy of this world or the things that the economy of this world can offer no i'm talking about what must become your harvest in that inheritance that has been reserved for the saints in light what must be your target 
to harvest for that inheritance that has been reserved for the saints in light why i'm saying this is because it is in this story i'm trying to paint for you now that the battle the battle for throne is entrenched the battle for throne the throne we are talking about is not any is not any church it's not any ministry can you hear what i'm saying can you hear what i'm saying the throne we are talking about is not any church it's not any ministry the throne we are talking about is your heart tell your neighbor the throne we are talking about is your heart look at look at your neighbor and make it more emphatic say it's your very heart that's the throne we are talking about if you study the if you study the old testament david's prophecy concerning the messiah you will discover that he is the one that lifted up the gates and broke ancient doors that is psalms and if you study critically that book of psalms you will know that in the tradition of the hebrews in the tradition of the jews there are three gates that the temple has now it is not gates as 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 unto structure that you must open it is openings that gates as unto portions you must assess before coming into the very presence of god are you understand what i'm saying there are person junctions you must cross and crossing those junctions are not just are not just um, casual crossings no they are ceremonial crossings ceremonial crossings because rituals must be performed those rituals that must be performed were rituals that must bring about cleansings and if the cleansings are not done you cross that gate you are dead God himself placed restrictions and prohibited men from crossing. Are you following what I'm saying? I, I like you to listen to me. My teachings are very simple and I just want your attention. God will help you to get the point I'm trying to raise. And I won't take time. But by the time we get to the end, your heart will understand why you must pray. And then you will know the essence, the things you must expect when you find yourself in this mainstream. In this mainstream of the last day church uh, I, anybody who has been close to me will know that i keep on crying i keep on raising a, a button and it will keep on ringing in my mouth the last day church the last day church the last day church the reason is because we are the last day church i, I are you are you aware of that I, are you aware of that yes we are the last day church and when i say last day church i don't mean institutional church I don't mean congregational church i don't mean ministerial church like this no i mean you as the temple of the holy spirit tell your neighbor you are the church yes you as the temple of the holy spirit is what i mean and if you are the temple of the holy spirit then you are the you are the object for battle tell your neighbor you are the object for battle the target look at him and say you are the and the target for battle and the subject for battle so take note of these three statements I made. Object for battle, target for battle, and subject for battle. Subject for battle because any day you, any day you decide to, to, to go against the cultural invasion, then your topic must be on the discussion table of hell, of Satan, until it is accomplished. So that the gate we are talking about is your heart and that is where the throne is the reason i'm trying to lay this this foundation is because we're talking about the battles for thrones you need to know the environment where the throne is located we need to know the palace where the throne is set and that throne is your heart now david that's where i was making emphasis helped help me to realize that every other gate was easy to access unless uh, unless that little gate called the gate of the heart in that book of psalms where he wrote about the prayer for the dedication of the temple in psalm 24 who shall ascend the holy hills of the lord and who shall dwell come nigh his temple then he began to make emphasis about the character of such people that they must have clean lips they must have pure hands pure hearts they must not have lifted up their souls to mute i hope you are bible students you know what i'm talking about psalms okay psalm 24 they must not have lifted up their souls to meet idols he said it is these ones they are the ones that god's attention will be will, will, will be fixed on because they are the generation of those that seek god 
say this is the generation of them that seek God so the ones that seek God is the ones that God's attention will be focused on and while he was writing that it looks as if he was just writing some poetic or poetry no he wasn't he wasn't writing poetry he was prophesying the bible said in the book of luke that the, that david was in the spirit when he said the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand so before we talk about the dispensation of the holy spirit the holy ghost has started working on david in the old testament are you understanding what i'm saying so that he could create a lot of patterns a lot of prophecies and a lot of models that will help us understand the ministry of the messiah and if that will help us understand the ministry of the messiah then it will help us know what to do in the end time i will say it that my greatest prayer my greatest cry every day is not to have power is not to have power in ministry to perform signs and wonders as, as a matter of fact signs and wonders by the way is our nature is our daily nature look at the number say signs and wonders is our daily nature oh oh I, I hope you are are you alert are you following what i'm saying what i mean by our daily nature is that we are supposed to come to a point where signs and wonders should be normal occurrence in our midst every day can you hear me every wait something serious even happened a few seconds ago. i just called you he came to pick he, he came to to take me from idani that there was a last call we made after we met right good after that last call we we made i made a second call because i saw a missed call of about eight to eight missed calls and he was my friend his name is ikenna i made a call and to shock me he told me he, the call had caught before i called him because we've gotten to the junction i had to cut this brother's call to call him because i knew where i need in the vicinity he had access to wait so that he can pick me because i didn't really know the road to this place and so i had to cut the call and called him and then we met him and then turned to follow him then after cutting his call i went back to the discussion i was having do you understand what i'm trying to explain and called the brother before i called him he had told me that they had brought down the sister with a low bp and all of a sudden um, after the treatment she's in the hospital lying lifeless and speechless then my boy came with me at Beniza. he was driving he was uh, lying speechless she, uh, the woman had gone unconscious for about 11 uh, about 18 hours that is from yesterday till now i'm a medical doctor by training so i know what that means i know what that means 18 hours unconscious lifeless speechless or they cook or they cook you or they or they may panya join your or can you cool me you heard when i was like or can you cool me i said yes not can you cool me but it was she wasn't speaking lifeless and unconscious so when i dropped the call i asked him pick up when i dropped his call i called back and said please put the phone on the woman just put it on loudspeaker so that my voice can just be coming out all just, just i need is sound just just sound the sound of my voice what i'm trying to say is that miracle signs and wonders should be your daily experience are you understand what i'm saying here are you listening to me it should be your daily experience i called him right away and spoke the life of god spoke the grace of christ out that is what we bear it is because we have seen and believed therefore we speak that's what the bible says in the book of romans it is because we believed therefore we do what we speak the reason is because this heart must be his throne and after that this heart has become his throne whatever comes out of the heart whatever flows out whatever issues out of the heart will be god to your generation do you understand what i'm, what I'm trying to say it must be christ to your world it must be god to your time and age it must be jesus to your generation but the battle if i am to raise an emphasis and a burden this morning the battle to contend for and to conquer is in the realm and the territory of the heart speaking in that few seconds i dropped and i said how is she he just told me that the the, the lady had just come out of unconsciousness this is someone that is already down dead came out of unconsciousness spoke and was normal i asked 
he was there listening to me my 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 my, my phone is programmed so you you could you could you could hear it it's programmed that way because of the issues this happened now i'm, I'm not talking about a meeting just now put it in your ears i tried to record it check if it's if it's that particular one and immediately the hand of god came upon the woman and took it off let me get it out i'll pass it across to you what i'm trying to say here is that once the hand of god has captured this heart what flows out of it must be god are you listening to me this morning are you listening to me now when when i get down I'll, I'll, I'll let you watch it so david was talking about assessing the throne of god and when he said lift up your heads O you gate and be lifted up you everlasting doors for the king of glory to come in it is for the king of glory to come in and take his throne and take his authority bible scholars and teachers who taught us about that scripture taught us that there were three gates that david was confronting prophetically through that prophecy so he wasn't just singing he wasn't just praying he was prophesying into the future of what was going to be the fate of the earth in the dispensation of the messiah in the dispensation of christ the gates that are called everlasting doors are the gates that have no hope for man except by the intervention of christ that's why it's called everlasting door had christ not intervened the door will remain the the situation will remain unchanged everlasting do you understand what i mean now had that is why it's called everlasting door had christ not intervened the situation will remain unchanged everlasting and so these gates were the gate of glory the gate of hell because the gate of hell has been broken eternally i'm talking about battles for throne can you hear what i'm saying battle for throne the gate of hell has been broken eternally what do i mean any day a reprobate sinner comes back to his mind and cries out unto god for redemption that same day the holy spirit is ready to fight a battle for redeeming of that soul am i correct am i correct so that if you are under the clutches of iniquity it is not grace that betrayed you it is not mercy that betrayed you it is the wickedness of your heart that kept you there am i talking to somebody here it's not grace that betrayed you it's not mercy of god that betrayed you it's not divine warning that betrayed you it's not that you did not hear the limitation had been brought jesus has taken charge of that throne throne is a, a place is where you administer authority you administer power and you administer judgment that's throne. the one that hell would have had over our soul christ has taken it he conquered it bible said he led captivity what and distributed gifts to what the man he led a train physical confirmation of paul's paul's prophecy uh, of Paul's um, statement in that epistle, the physical confirmation was that when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible said in the book of Luke that dead men were found walking around the street of Jerusalem. Dead men were seen. So that it will confirm the mystery of the reality that Jesus did not just break hell, he liberated men. And because we are weak in our faith and full of skepticism in our spirit, that is we doubt everything. Or we want to subject everything to skeptic analysis do you understand what i'm saying and that's the problem that man has created it is because of the fall the falling nature of man is has lost faith with god that wherever god is walking if you are not allowed if you don't allow him yield yourself to the holy spirit to break everything that is iniquity and flesh in you in, in order to bring you to god's pattern you will doubt god and even doubt the things he's saying how many times have god given you instruction and because it looks too difficult to obey 
you wanted to doubt the spirit that is saying it has it happened to you or not how many times has he has has he awoken you and, and tried to direct you in a course that you are you are supposed to go and the 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 flesh within you had refused to allow you yield to god's direction how many times had god called you and tried to humble you and said humble yourself and and lay your head down and give honor to this one submit to this one give honor to this one but then the man within is difficult because it has not found an opening with the holy spirit to condescend that law the adam the adam you know is a highly lifted man can you hear what i'm saying he's a highly lifted man he's a man invaded by lucifer and everything about lucifer is to go high he said in the book of isaiah in chapter 14 how art thou fallen, O Lucifer? How art thou fallen, O Lucifer? Son of the morning. For you desire in thine heart. You, 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 you delighted in your heart to lift up yourself and sit over the congregation of the saints in the side of the north. He is looking for a throne over the saints. How you desire to sit over the congregations of the saints in the side of the north. He said, but you are cut down. It was God who cut him down. So his desire was to have a throne over the saints. So if the enemy, the Lucifer's first desire, primus desire, primary desire, right from the foundations of heaven and before the foundations of the world was established that man will live in tandem with God in nature. Lucifer given the opportunity to serve with god started desiring to sit over man where do you think he will find that seat where where the heart where is the control center of man his heart so everything about his desire to sit is your heart if there is any battle for throne ongoing in this last day is your heart and that's why all that is happening in the globe all that is happening under heaven it is haunting for the hearts of men my own heart and yours i am not also immune to what i'm telling you so every one of us is engaged in battle whether you are battle conscious or not the battle is ongoing turn to your friend tell him are you battle ready even that ask him are you even aware of the battle you see what bothers me a little bit also is that what we describe as the battle is a big error what we describe as the battle is a big error whereas you are one is one is deceived to to, to think that that your battle is about a group of persons family members or relations in the village or colleagues in church and, and fellowship who have allowed themselves to fall so low to begin to live in some petty life you know, pettiness i call it pettiness when it when you know pettiness of your uh, uh, your, your my, my brother was telling you about our keeping quiet you know the pettiness of the misuse of the mouth the misuse of tongue the misuse of language all of those petty those and at the end of the day those things bring us to begin to see ourselves as if we are the enemies in battle as a matter of fact those are just deceptions of the battle so that you can divert your battle energy to the wrong direction and keep firing bullet to, to uh, are you hearing what i'm saying and keep wasting your bullet while the enemy is wrecking havoc in the headquarters your heart is wrecking havoc there many times you come into the body of christ you see diversions and what are the diversions confusions based on pettiness and we cannot allow our hearts so humble ourselves and descend so low to say god if it will take me going through this process all the years i am willing provided your name is glorified sometimes we even describe the glory of god as the glory of our body the things around us the marks are the marks of the, who told you that the things around you are the marks of the glory of god it is the heart and the very heart of a man that god seeks did he not say that to the prophet samuel when he went to anoint for himself a king god went, went to anoint for himself a king through samuel what did he say to samuel he said look not upon the countenance of eliab's face for i have what 
I can't hear it. For I have what? I have rejected him. Look not upon the countenance of his face. Look not upon the broadness of his chest and the, and the, and the, and the wideness of his shoulders. Look not upon those things. For I, the Lord, I see where? I look upon where? The hearts. He said, to this man will I look. To this man will I look. He that is with a broken and what? And a contrite heart. A contrite spirit. So, the diversion is very critical and crucial. It's very critical and crucial. Jesus has broken the first gate, conquered everything that is there, took the throne. Because throne is a symbol of power, a symbol of authority, a symbol of strength and judgment. He took it away from Satan. There was no room for Satan anymore to have authority and judgment over the souls of men in Hades forever. Forever he took it away. I thought, I have thought about this several times that prior to the death of Christ, everyone who fell in death, anybody who fell in death went under the bondage of Satan. And that was the plan of Satan perpetually. And this was the reason why the son of God was hunted by Satan. Hunted to be crucified. Because they never knew that death was a pathway to victory. He thought that death was an end. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So he, he thought that death was an end. But to Satan, death is an end. To God, death is a pathway. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a pathway to victory. It's a pathway to life. And had he known, he would not have crucified the king of glory. But when he did, the king of glory took hold of everything that was captivity. He took it captive. And then that gate was broken. It would have been an everlasting door that whoever fell in death will not have any place with God. From the days of the fall of Adam, man had no hope anymore. Jesus came and restored that. Paul was emphasizing in the, book of, in the book of Hebrews that he brought many sons to glory. He opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. That was a gate that was, that was impossible. I mean, everlasting door that access for you and I would have been forever denied. Would have been forever denied. He opened the gate again. He granted us access. I will not emphasize. This was what David was emphasizing in Psalm 24. To conquer hell, Christ came in authority and demonstrated his supremacy and declared to hell and hell was conquered. That is how we conquer hell also. To open the gate of heaven, he ascended. And when he had paid the price of divine justice, God was forced to withdraw the cherubims. God was forced to withdraw the flaming swords he has placed in that gate at the tree of life. He withdrew them so that man is forever granted access. That access we saw in scripture that it was physically modeled and symbolized by the opening of the veil so that the mercy seat and the throne is now open to everyone to come and meet with the Lord. So that Hebrew said that this time we can now come boldly. Come boldly to the throne of what? Come boldly where? To the throne of grace. So a throne has been set open for us to come boldly. There is no battle involved anymore in that. Yes, there are no choices. So to say, grace and mercy has made those ones available. Gate of hell conquered gate of heaven by grace and mercy made available access granted but when it came to the issue of your heart and mine Jesus suddenly lost all his supremacy lost all his authority and will come to the door of your heart and knock and he will be knocking if you will open so it is not anything done forcefully he will not authoritatively capture your heart. He will not by power insist on your heart. 
if you have a relationship with the holy spirit you will know that often time as a child of god you have failed the holy spirit and have grieved him because his voice is not insistent his biddings are not insistent are you are you listening to what i'm saying his biddings are not insistent he won't insist on you and that is why sometimes the greatest error and the fear that 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 runs in my heart is when the one who is a child of god will run the course of the flesh saying it is the spirit that is at work running the activities of the flesh from this same heart and saying it is the spirit that is at work the wise man solomon warned in the book of proverbs he said guard your heart with all what all diligence for out of it is what flows the issues of life flows the issues of life that's where the throne is that's where the throne is that's where the battle takes place that's where the contention takes place that's where the kingdom is established for any kingdom any king that conquers this heart that's where he builds his kingdom now this simple explanation that I'm putting forth to give you understanding becomes the beginning of your decision making process now if your very heart cannot work out the perfect purpose of God and you are subjecting it to any activity under God you are at risk you are at risk of colossal colossal and collateral damage in this battle many have become war casualties war casualties because they made moves thinking it was Christ that was speaking in their hearts it is the seat of the warfare guard it with all diligence I see a society where the invasion is targeting the earth so now you will understand what I mean by when I started talking about globalization of the invasion where is the invasion targeted I can't hear you where is the invasion targeted the heart I see it and when in 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 few in few minutes of meditation I try to run my mind on the on the cultural shift that is happening in my own dispensation and and I just I just become scared when I look at my children three of them and many others who are foster children to me I look at them and I and I say to myself God can these young ones can they survive this battle that I am fighting now because when their own age comes up like mine it would have degenerated further it would have degenerated further today we celebrate the days of our fathers that it was better than ours am I correct am I correct so what will be their fate when their own day and time emerges how is this war going on you you may you may not be too worried to think about spiritual warfare in terms of casting and binding demons there is a depart there, there is there is a room for that there is a context for that in all of our work with god there are contexts for everything now i'm talking about the major context of the war that is besieging us is the war of the heart i've seen christians sincerely sincere christians live in bitterness where is bitterness situated i must where is it situated and in the midst of that do you know we can still cast and bind demons and they will obey are you aware of that are you aware of that we can still cast and bind demons they will obey i've seen christians sincere christians in this time still live with all kinds of all kinds of wicked assumptions and conclusions that are
totally away from the principles of scripture. Where are those thoughts generated from? Where are the hearts? So that the heart is a place and subject for the battle. So when he gets the heart, so take the heart to be the throne. If he gets the throne, everything is possible. In second, in first Samuel, I think first Samuel or second, 1810. The Bible said, and in the morrow, an evil spirit from God. An evil spirit came upon who? Came upon who? And what did he do? What did he do? He prophesied. sight. Read it again. Open that scripture. 1810. Quickly. Somebody read it clearly. First Samuel. Read it from King James. Yes. Is that King James? Yes, sir. Good. Read. Quickly. And it came to pass. Uh, no, I'm trying to talk about. I'm trying to talk about a man who is serving the purpose of God over God's people. Now, let's not let's not pay attention on position. Let's pay attention on disposition. Disposition means he's a Christian. We can we can tag that on him because he started out with god am i correct he started out with god in that journey when he left his father's house a benjamite in search of his father's lost asses am i correct he met with god's servant the prophet and everything that was given to him were were so undeniable the signs were so undeniable that if this and this and these three things happens and then you meet a company of prophets coming down from the high places join yourself with them the spirit of the lord that was upon them will come upon you and you'll be turned into another man and from that point whatever comes to you do as occasion do as occasion serves you that's a free that's an open check for a man that has been groomed by god for a man that has passed through the processes of god god has now handed over authority to him whatever happens to you from that point do as occasion serves you now this was such man in the process of time in the process of time he started losing it so it's not that he was lost away from the congregation of faith he was right in the congregation of faith in the process of time he was gradually losing it until he had come to the point where an evil spirit does what comes upon him and at the point when the evil spirit can come upon him he was still in the house he was still in the house this is what bothers me now that the battle for thrones is evil spirits hunting to sit upon those who are not outside but in the house. Can you hear what I'm saying? Can you hear what I'm saying? Yes. That's the, that's the battle. And the spirit came upon him and he prophesied so from our text it was very now it was now very obvious and very clear that this this kind of spirit that invaded him was a, a very religious kind of evil spirit somebody say very religious evil spirit i can't hear you say very religious evil spirit if there is any battle that god is going to conquer in your life is any battle that will make you a very religious evil spirit 
Am I talking to somebody? If there's any, if there's any battle that God is going to conquer in your life, is the battle that will make you a very known Christian but cannot be an encouragement. Cannot be an encouragement to the body, even to the unbelievers. You can't be. I don't want to make emphasis on that. The heart can be lifted. And when it comes to our own experience as young people, you must guard the heart because we are in a fast moving generation. Did I say that earlier? You must guard your, because at your age and time, you, your greatest battle at your age and time is to slow down. Tell your neighbor, at this age, your great, one of your greatest challenges is to slow down. Now, the concept of slowing down comes, comes in the version of training, discipleship, staying with are you hearing what i'm saying sitting at his feet growing down not up we are in a generation where young people wants to grow up noticeable growth rather than growing what down growing down is invisible growing up is noticeable everyone grows wants to grow upwards and not downwards and it is in this time when your heart is easily easily tempted to grow upwards that's when the battle for your throne is easily won that is when the enemy can easily win that battle because it won't be difficult he may plan things like arrogance things like loftiness things like the arrival mentality and understanding that you have arrived he plants it in unless you know what god is saying there are things steps you will be taking and every voice of caution cannot bring you back. Every voice of caution cannot instruct you. Every voice of caution cannot tame the spirit that has gone wild. And where it goes wrong is when that wild spirit is given a baptism that it is the Holy Spirit upon it. That's when nobody can help it anymore. That's the battle of the heart. If this can be understood and it becomes our basis for prayer, that will be enough for this morning. The cultural shift is heavy. The invasion is strong. And if there is a generation that must recover this throne, hit your chest. Say this throne. Look at it again. Say, say this very throne. A lot of battle for it. If there is a generation that must recover this throne, then such generation must begin to look for patterns look for patterns and models to guide your warfare tell your neighbor look for models to guide your warfare tell him look for patterns to guide your warfare so that the greatest prayer that a child of God in this end time must always keep praying is the prayer of the sons of Issachar to have understanding. It's not to perform the miracle. It's not to achieve the achievements. It is first to have what? Understanding. It's not to, it's not to be everywhere to be known. To, no, 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 no. That's not the first. Is to have understanding. The reason why understanding is necessary now is because, sit down, there is no other time, there is no generation that that's perhaps sits in the greatest confusion as our own generation. Am I correct? Am I correct? There is no generation that perhaps sits in the greatest confusion of faith. The confusion of faith the, is the confusion of the context of the context of faith than my generation. Everything is everything is found in this one word we call faith now. Everything is found in it. 
Christ is found in it. Crisis is found in it. Satan is found in it. Astrology is found in it. Wickedness is found in it. Iniquity is in it. Everything together. Faith. And what the enemy is doing is that he's invading our minds through the back door of imagination, image. That is why one of the principal, principal, one of the principal departments of the enemy, they walk by imagination. Imagination is a principal strategy. Witchcraft is one. Imagination is the other. Now, witchcraft is not this, this our definition that we define in this part of our world where that uh, animals fly, insects, things, you know. But that is not witchcraft, blood sucking spirit, no. Witchcraft is a method of operation, a mode, a modus operandi. Witchcraft is a modus operandi. Whereas the Holy Ghost walks by the Spirit, Satan walks by witchcraft. So that wherever the Holy Spirit lives and is no longer the one in charge of the operation there, what takes over immediately is what? I can't hear you. What takes over immediately is what? Shout it is what? Witchcraft. I mean, the, the moment it is not the Holy Spirit doing this, if this continues, it's witchcraft that is on it. Am I speaking to someone this morning? So, that is why the heart must be carefully guarded. Because if he lives, disaster has occurred. The greatest prayer is understanding. Is understanding. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Just sing it. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Mm, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. 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 To see you. To see you. I lifted up. Shining. Shining in the light of your glory. Show us your power and love. As we sing. I want to see you. Every day, you must live circumspectly. The Bible wants us in Ephesians. Every day, you must live circumspectly. Not like fools, but like what? Like wise. Redeeming what? The time. Every day, you must live circumspectly. What it means to live circumspectly is to live very carefully. To be very heedful of every step, every action, everything that is said, everything that is received. And I want to ask, if this is what scripture recommends in order to win this battle, how many of us are confident that we are living that carefully every day? How many? Sometimes I sit down and when I read scripture, I ask myself, Moses, see the recommendation of the Bible. Are you really living this care? The way the Bible places it means that you must be very careful and circumspect. He used the word circumspect. Be, living circumspectly means be, be careful with everything. Be careful with everything. And will you know that that is not an impossible life to live? It is not an impossible life. It is a life that the spirit will impact in you a mindset it is a mindset a mindset that be that understand a heart that knows that this is the set of my heart the mode of my heart i must be careful about everything i do from now if god is going to visit you in this meeting then one of the decisions you may rise up with from this conference as you go is that god help me to live a life that from now i must be careful about everything 
I do. And one will be wondering, how can that be possible? It's possible. It's possible to be careful about everything. Why, how did, why did I say so? Because in my profession, it is possible. I, we, we, we put it in my profession, it's possible. I do it in my profession. I was trained for it. In the process of the training, I've grown through it. And now, there is nothing. And once you fail to be careful about it, the result shows. People have died from the hands of medical doctors. A little carelessness. Am I correct? A little carelessness. You can't go in. You can't go in. You can't go in after an incision and you are careless about it. The protocols must be observed. And we have subjected our this same physical mind, our natural mind. We are we, we exposed it to training so much that we can now do intricate surgeries with every dexterity and precision and all carefulness, laser precision. I'm not talking about casual precisions, laser precision. When you say laser precision, it means it means accuracy that is microscopic. Oh, how can I explain this? Are, 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 you, understand, are you understand what I'm trying to say? Accuracy that is microscopic. Very accurate. And I said, if this is possible in the natural, how much more will the Holy Spirit through his own spirit, how much more will God through his spirit grant you a life of such accuracy in the spiritual? That is to say, holy, living holy is possible. Are you are you are you are you falling to follow me to I'm driving at somewhere. Are you understanding what I'm driving at now? It's very possible. And and in the name of Jesus, every devil that makes you think is a difficult thing to achieve. I bind that enemy in the name of Jesus. Every kingdom that makes you think that that accurate precision in righteousness is impossible. May that devil be gone in your life. They, they set their status, they set their systems of death in our hearts and make us think that God, our righteousness is unlivable, is unlivable, that is untenable in our time, that, it, that the pattern of our life is not consistent with a system of righteousness. Who told you that? That is the goal of the warfare for you to come to that state of heart where you think it is not possible. That's the goal of the warfare. Then, once you arrive there, the battle has taken you. It's not about praying hard. No, 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 no. Once you arrive at that point, where in your heart you think, Bible said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so the case has closed. The case has closed. It's a very subtle battle. It's a very sensitive battle. It's it's a very subtle battle. To be my life and amen, I no see You 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 what I mean now? before you can tell the battle is done my heart lay hands on it pray in the spirit say Lord this heart this heart this heart as that dear pants for water so my heart longs for you Forever and ever, yes. This heart must beat for you. As the day pants for water, so my heart longs for you. It's the center of the battle. Forever and ever, yes. This heart. It, it, it is it is possible that some of you will raise will raise a contention now against the things that weigh you down in your heart. It, it, it is necessary that at some point you contend. You contend. If contents, if content, contention is not a, you contest for it. Things that, things that you need, arsenals, graces, graces and additions that you will need for the heart, you contest for it to receive them. The ones that are about to be carted away, the enemy had advanced and encroached and has entered the headquarters of your heart and is about to carry them. You contend for those ones. So you contest for what you receive and contend for what to retain. Otherwise, you have lost it. And recovery, he won't let you. Pray and talk to God. Pray in the spirit. 
Cause the dear pants for water so My heart longs for you Forever and ever, yes This heart beats for you As the dear pants for water so Talk to him Kick up and suck up understand that you must walk circumspectly fathers of old they were the ones whose hearts were resigned submissive and meek their heart was a place where only Christ alone is permitted to speak and no other voice if possible to this morning somebody will silence all the voices and say Lord if I cannot contend for silencing the voices on my heart then come by your grace and take on a battle for on this heart can you pray Talk to him. Oh, for our hearts. Oh, for our hearts. That is the Redeemer's throne. Somebody cry out. For a heart that is the Redeemer's throne. Once the throne, if that place has become an established throne for the Redeemer, then you can conquer any other throne. Whether they be thrones, whether they be principalities, whether they be powers, you will conquer them. I am so you eat that the victory will come. If this citadel is captured, oh for a heart that is the redeemer's throne, submissive and meek. Where Christ alone is permitted to speak and no other voice. Talk to him. The mighty are exposed. The little are exposed. Everyone in it, the valiant are exposed. The weak are equally exposed. No one, no one, no one can ever lift up his hands and say that the warfare is accomplished. Was not 
impossible. He knelt down and with his knees drank in 39 steps of atonement and found nothing to be atoned for in his heart. And then he turned to the Lord to discover that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And he got up and said, This heart, oh God, set it on a pedestal so that I can come to the place of knowledge, the place of knowing. And the sons of Israel had no understanding. That's what you must pray for. Somebody cry out, understanding. Come on in, oh my God, the impartation of understanding. Understanding. Impart this heart to understanding. Today I beg for understanding.
attention anymore after this moment they cannot gain your attention anymore there is someone here you are battling with divided attention each time you want to focus your attention is divided who is that my god visit that life now you are battling with divided attention each time you want to focus your attention is divided whenever you try to focus you try to focus. Your attention is divided. Father, rise! And come upon this one. Come upon your sons and daughters. The invasion cannot continue. No! It can't. We can't. That they are the Lord Bishop and His Spirit. Stay with them. Stay with them. Stay with them. Shy. It's time you try to focus. It's time you try to focus. They divide your attention. You are you are you are fighting, battling, battling against divided attention. It's a battle of the heart. It's a battle of the heart. Let the flames of the spirit. Let the flames of the spirit burn upon you. We are not going to play. We can't live this way. We can't live this way anymore. It is the end time. It is the last days. We can't live this way anymore. Talk to God. The battle is on. The battle is on. It's against me. It's against you. It's against all of us. The battle is on. It's against you. It's against me. It's against all of us. That is why we can't live this way anymore. Holy Spirit. Somebody call on him. Holy Spirit. Call on him. Holy Spirit. Call on him. Call on him. Holy Spirit. Do your 
of the prophetics in in 2000 in, in 1999 stay with that come come come, come this way. stay with that in 1999 which was the, 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 the beginning of the manifestation of my calling into the prophet i have been a child of god yes six years into the assignment up until 2005 it was partly with divided attention this time I try to focus. The, the war is heavy on the heart. I know what I'm talking about. I know. Many times, many nights I cried about it. I said, Lord, for how long? How long shall I battle divided spirits? How long? If, if it is not conquered, then the eagle cannot soar in the place of his own dominion. The eagle cannot soar in the place of his own possession, in the territory of his own power. He can't so. I know about the battle. Six years. I prayed about it. It became a stubborn issue to, to conquer until the Lord broke it. It was, a, it was a visitation of the heart. A visitation of the heart. Father, I ask, here are your children, sons and daughters. Two thousand and five, it broke. Two thousand and five, it broke, and I found out that an eagle has been released, released from the snare, and the soaring was to the nations. The soaring was to the nations, to the nations. I know, and that's what is going on till now.